The Deeper Mind PokerBot is a software that can help you to play in a fully automated way on any poker client. Custom client tables can be mapped with a table mapper. The software works based on image template recognition and neural networks, Monte Carlo simulation for equity calculation, and a basic genetic algorithm for self-improvement based on elaborate statistics. The mouse can move automatically and clicks if autoplay is enabled, and the bot can potentially play for hours. The strategy can be adjusted by a large number of parameters. You can continuously improve the strategies until you have fully automated your poker playing style. Various statistics help you decide how to best improve the strategy. Let's get started with how to get set up. When you open the bot, Place it next to an unobstructed poker client so it can see the whole table. Make sure it's not scaled and that the window size is at its default. You can then select a strategy and a table map. Once you're ready, you can press the start button and the bot will start to play. If it doesn't recognize the top left corner of your table, you can either choose a different table map or you can create your own table map in table setup. We'll get into more details about that later on. Once we press the start button, the bot will analyze the table and start to play. In this case, I have the poker client at the right and the poker bot on the left. By the way, you may want to put the client into a virtual box or team viewer to make sure nobody gets offended by you using a bot. Some poker clients take it very personally and may prevent you from playing. Anyway, as you can see, the bot starts to recognize all the items on the table then moves the mouse and clicks. Once the bot has moved, you can see all the statistics. In this case, the trial one strategy isn't working very well, but the statistics will help us to see where the problems are and we can start working on improving the strategy. Let's have a look at how the strategy can be analyzed by looking at the generated statistics of historical playing with the respective strategy. In the strategy analyzer, I can see what the outcomes of the different actions of the strategy were. The two bars at the left show pre-flop, then flop, then turn and finally the river. Each stage has two bars, one for wins and one for losses. The different colors tell you what the action was fold, call, bet or bet the full pot for example. The best way to improve a strategy is when you work your way backwards from the river. We can see that the winning bar in the river is slightly higher than the losing bar. That's a good sign. Let's have a look at the black area in the bar. Black means we were betting the full pot. You can see that we have almost always won if we bet the full pot, as we can only see black in the winning section of the river. What about calling? We can see that the green area in the two bars is around the same. That means if we call at the river, we win around half of it and lose around the other half. So this gives us a clue that we might have to be a bit more conservative in calling at the river. The gray area shows us how we were doing when we checked. Checking seems to be leading to more wins than losses as the gray area is larger in the left bar than in the right bar. Let's think about what that could mean by looking at an extreme case. If we won every time we checked, this would probably mean that we should be a bit more aggressive and bet or raise more. So overall, we might have to be a bit more aggressive in betting, but not in calling. It's important that you have a very close look at the statistics after you have played around 1,000 hands. As mentioned before, first start with the river, then work your way backwards. Whenever a certain action leads to more losses than wins in a stage, this gives you a clue that you will need to make some adjustments. Whenever checking leads to more wins than losses, you will probably want to become more aggressive. That way you can iteratively improve your strategy. There is no silver bullet to make this quick. Generally, it's almost impossible to come to any conclusion if you have played less than 1,000 hands. Very often it may take even more than that. Now that we know how we can adjust our strategy, let's go to the strategy editor. Here we can make adjustments at each stage individually. We can adjust if the bot should be more or less aggressive in calling or betting, depending on the circumstances. You can hover over each individual slider and it will give you more information about what it does. The concept is simple. In the chart, you see that the x-axis depicts equity, 
which is the probability that you will win a showdown with your cards. If your equity is higher, then you have to move to the right in the chart. You can see that the red line, which stands for betting or raising, and the blue line, which stands for calling, both go higher the higher your equity is. This means, looking at the required minimum bet or call amount, it will take the respective action. Picking up from our previous analysis from the strategy analyzer, if we want to make betting more aggressive, we should either lower its minimum required equity or lower the curvature, which will mainly affect higher equity amounts. Lowering the minimum equity will move the curves to the left. As a result, we will be more likely to be to the right of the curve for a given equity and minimum bet or call amount. As a result, we will calling and betting more. Further adjustments can be made on how your relative position will affect the curves and various other factors can be included. Have a look at the sliders. Hover over them to get more information. Let's go over another example of how the curves work. Let's assume we have quite a good hand and together with the cards on the table we have an equity amount of 80%. We would call if the minimum required call is to the right of the blue line. We would raise if the minimum required bet is to the right of the red line. So if, for example, the minimum required bet was 0.01, .01, we would find ourselves to the right of the red line, so we would bet. You can set the minimum required equity that is needed to call or to bet if the call amount is very small. You can then adjust the curvature of the lines, so adjust the behavior of how likely you are to call or to bet if the equity is much higher. For example, if the equity is 90%, you'd be most likely willing to call a much higher amount than if your equity was just let's say 50%. That is why the curves are always upward sloping, but you control where they start and what shape they have. Back to basics. What if the bot doesn't even play at all? What if it doesn't recognize the top left corner of your client? You may need to choose a different table mapping, or in some cases, you may want to map your own table. This can be done as follows. Open the table mapper and place the client next to it. First, let's create a blank new table. Let's make sure we name it in a way, so others can also use it. This will be helpful for you if you want the bot to collude with others later. Press the Take Screenshot button. Very important, make sure that only one table is visible. The first step is now to mark the top left corner of the poker tables window, which will be the point of reference for everything else that will follow. To mark the top left corner, you need to mark it by first clicking on the top left part of it and then on the right lower part of it. Once you have done this, it will appear in the second window. You can save it by clicking on the Save New Top Left Corner button. Now you can crop it by pressing on the Crop from Left Corner button. This will discard most of the screenshot and only keep the screenshot from the top left corner and everything a few hundred pixels to the right of it and below. Now that we have defined the top left corner and clicked on Save New Top Left Corner, we have a point of reference for everything else. Now we can move on and map all the other items on the table. In principle, you have two types of items to mark. The first one is the areas where we look for templates. The second thing is the templates themselves that we are looking for. Then there is the third one, which is the numbers. They need to be recognized via OCR. There are quite a few details you need to know to make sure you get everything right. That's why it's important to hover over each button and read the instructions that will appear. Let's get started with some examples. The button's search area helps us identify if the buttons have appeared and it's therefore our turn. Let's mark where this area is by first clicking on the top left and then bottom right area of the buttons. Once you are happy with the selection, click on the button's search area and the coordinates are automatically saved to the central database. Again, if you hover over the buttons, you will get a more detailed description of what you need to pay attention to. Note that you will need to take many screenshots, crop them, don't select the top left corner again, as this you should only do once. Instead, load it and then crop the image. After that, make your selection of the different images and save them by pressing on the corresponding button. You'll need to teach it every card and every button, etc. 
So we have seen that sometimes there are areas that we map, sometimes it's templates that we are looking for into those areas. The third kind of items we need to map are numbers. Whenever you teach it any numbers to recognize, make sure to test it by pressing the Recognize Number button. All numbers need to go through the Tesseract OCR engine and need to be correctly recognized. You also have to be smart about things like how the Call or Raise button is recognized, as the numbers on it are always different. So when you define the Call or Raise button, it should only be the part above the number. Essentially the part that is always the same. Don't be stingy when you define a search area. It's always better to be too large than too small. But for the templates themselves, always just select the minimum that is necessary. Next, let's learn the cards. First, we need to tell it where it needs to be looking for the cards. So let's select the area of the cards. Second, we need to give it a template for each card that it can look for. As you can see, I select first the top left, then the bottom right area of the card, then I save it. Let's do this for all the cards that are on the table, one by one. We need to do this with every card. For some clients, such as GG Poker, you can see that my own cards are slightly tilted. This means they cannot be easily recognized by a template, but rather we need to make use of a neural network that we have to train. In that case, only use the table cards to create the templates as they are not tilted. Once all the cards are mapped, we need to map additional items, such as dealer buttons and pot areas. Here it is important to know that player zero is myself and player one is the one just next to me clockwise. You will need to map all the items for each player. Next, we want to tell it where the mouse needs to click once the bot has made a decision. Here again, we mark each button by first pressing on the top left then the bottom right corner. It's important to mark the full button in that case, so the bot can randomize where it clicks on the button to make it appear more human. Once you have finished teaching everything, make sure to run a test by clicking on the test button. Have a look at the log entry and make sure everything is correct. Almost all issues that you'll face later on will be able to be attributed to having some issues or small mistakes in the mapping. That's why it's very important you get that right. If you have any questions, please use the Discord chat to talk to the community. If you are good at coding, please visit the GitHub page. Any contributions, be it coding or mapping new tables or actively helping other members, are highly valued and can get you a free premium subscription. Thank you for listening. Happy playing.